Hello, my name is Sarah Laster, and I'm so sorry I, you cannot see my face. Not even Google could help me show you my face, so y'all can just hear my voice, and I'm so sorry for that. I'm Anna Lambie, and I can share my face, so I will try to be um, animated enough for the both of us. Um, and we are in Geology 1040. Um, we are super excited to present some of the things that we have learned this semester um, in this class. We are going to share several geology news articles that share geology news discoveries and apply to today's world. So first is Antarctica and plate discoveries. But first, I'm going to give you the facts on Antarctica. Antarctica is the coldest continent on Earth with temperatures anywhere between 20 and negative 50 degrees as an average. Only a handful of people live here, which is 1,000 to 1,500, which I don't even know why you want to live there because that's just too cold for me. Antarctica is full of snow and sheets of ice and glaciers and most importantly is the least studied region on earth. So in the news, scientists have created a device that measures changes of rocks under ice, such as magnetic and gravity signatures. The results indicate there are pieces of missing rock replaced with younger rock. I don't know if you can remember geologic time, but that is huge looking at geologic time and rocks. Geologists believe these results mean less of East Antarctica, Antarctica formed the entire continent of Antarctica. This discovery just aids in the understanding of plate tectonics and ge geologic time on the least studied continent on Earth. Next is Moab, Utah and its red rock formations. Moab, Utah is known for its red rock formation. It has many towers or large rocks for experienced climbers to climb up. It is one of the most popular climbing destinations in the world. Castleton Tower is a popular tower to climb and is 120 meters high. Castleton Tower and other towers surrounding it has seismic activities, even though it appears perfectly still. These geologic structures are in constant motion due to human activity, ocean waves, and even response to earthquakes. I don't know about you, but looking after all these pictures makes me want to add Moab, Utah to my bucket list. So as I previously mentioned, you can climb up several rocks and towers in Moab, Utah. On this certain tower, Castleton Tower, a climber was encouraged to bring a seismometer which is seen at the bottom left, along with them on their climb up Castleton Tower to measure how much the tower vibrates. The data collected from climbers helps determine any huge seismic activity in the past. Even though one can feel the ground shake, these towers have a frequency of 0.8 to 15 hertz or sway one to 15 times a second. So down at the bottom right is a picture of Castleton Tower and you can see how tall that tower is. So I don't know about you, but I'm not really into climbing up really tall things like that. But that is awesome that people can do that and figure out seismic activities. Our next article that we're going to be talking about is um, from the South Dakota Geology Mines Museum. Um, and I learned that once a year, geology students at the University of South Dakota host a free fossil identification event. So it's free to their local community. Anybody can come um, and geology hobbyists can bring any kind of rocks or fossils that they have lying around the house to be evaluated and identified. Um, and, and these students will help them just learn as much as they can, get as much information as they can out of um, a professional analysis of these rocks um, and their professors are obviously they're mentoring them as well. You might be wondering um, what the benefit is. Why would somebody be interested in bringing their rocks to be looked at on a Saturday? Um, well, there's several benefits to having fossils or rocks identified by a professional for both parties. This is a mutually beneficial event. The students working the event have um, gained professional experience and real world experience because this is not 
something that is prepared for them by a professor in a lab. This is just random people bringing them random things that they may not have seen before. Um, and they are gaining experience in that, which is awesome. They also get the chance to help serve their community with their special skills that not everybody else has. Um, I always know that I love it when I get to help somebody with the gifts that I have that maybe not everyone else has. And this is such a cool way for them to be able to do that for their community. Um, and it's also beneficial, obviously, to the attendees who, um, at no cost to them, gain exciting knowledge about geology at their fingertips, because these are just rocks that they could have sitting at their desk. And you just, you might not be thinking about, um, you know, what that rock is and what it entails and what it's telling you. Um, so they get a little gleam into that, which is super awesome. Um, in general, just for all of us as humanity, rock identification benefits all of us because it gives us clues as to how the world was that existed before us um, or, or existed before we got to that particular rock or fossil. Um, you know, we don't know, none of us were alive when dinosaurs were alive, but we, we know about them because of the clues that they left behind. So that's why it's so important, um, because it's just another way for us to learn history about our beautiful planet. The next article that I'm going to talk about focused on geology in local communities, different events that were going on. Um, this is something that I noticed every time that I went to write a report, every time that I was looking for an article to talk about, I noticed um, so many events going on that were being written about in um, local communities by like museums and universities and libraries and um, so many events were being put on. And this was something that I particularly noticed because I had never really seen or noticed these things before taking this class. I guess I just wasn't looking for them. Um, but there's so many universities and museums that host rock gardens, career fairs, fossil digging activities for the young ones, and lectures for their communities. Um, this project has inspired me personally to get involved in some of the events like this in Tennessee state parks or caves. Um, Tennessee has really cool caves in our state. Um, and in this picture at the bottom here, this is a picture of Craighead Caverns located in Sweetwater, Tennessee, um, which is in East Tennessee, so very doable for us. Um, this is home to the Lost Sea is what it's very ominously called. Um, and it's an underground body of water, which is super interesting. And I never would have known about it um, had I not been doing these reports. So it made me really personally excited to get involved in these things and go check these cool places out. Hannah, hey, have you been to these caverns? Because I have, and it makes me want to go back and check it out with my new knowledge of geology. Yeah, I have not been to these caverns. I have been to different ones, and I think they're so, so interesting and so beautiful. Um, so it's really cool that we have access to those things in our state. Um, in conclusion, geology is awesome and I have learned to really appreciate it this semester because it can apl be applied to so many different aspects of our everyday lives. We come into contact with it everywhere we are we don't even think about it. Um, it also is um, a key to opening new doors to new adventures. Um, like when Sarah was talking about the seismometer and those towers in Utah, um, that's, that's new information that we're getting, exciting new discoveries, but it's also the key to unlocking old ones and learning history about our planet. I love history. I'm a big history person. So this is super interesting to me, the history component of geology. Geology is all around us, just like Anna was talking about with those caverns out in Sweetwater, Tennessee, you can see a huge example of geology even just in our own state. And you can go and visit all types of events for geology, go see all kinds of sites. It just depends on how you will get involved in your local geology. Will you get involved? But in all seriousness, geology rocks. Thank you for your time. This concludes our presentation.